another exciting episode of CoreCast. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about our fully digital amplifier, the Kratos. Uh, it is obviously a fully digital amplifier. It's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it basically takes a fully digital signal, uh, amplifies it in the digital domain, and then demodulates it to drive your speakers directly. Uh, so it's eliminating all the D to A conversion, A to D conversion, uh, a separate preamp or amplifier, and all the analog cables in between. Uh, so it's a very simple system. You basically connect your source, whether it's a computer-based source like our Mac Mini music servers uh, or your CD player, uh, directly via SPDIF to the input. And that's your whole system. It keeps it fully digital and eliminates all the stages of conversion. And obviously, like an analog system, and one of the reasons that people like analog systems is that it doesn't have signal conversion or signal processing. And so when you, when you eliminate the same stages of conversion in a digital system, you not only get that natural organic sound, but you also have much higher resolution than what you can get from, from an analog system. Uh, so it's a very, very low distortion type of sound. Uh, the way that this amplifier works is it takes a PCM input, which is a square wave. That square wave is then reclocked uh, by our clocking circuit. And we use an MPGA PWM controller, uh, which basically takes the PCM signal, converts it to a pulse width modulation, which is another type of square wave, and then amplifies it. And the signal basically goes through a feedback circuit and is demodulated to drive a speaker directly. Uh, and that's how the analog output is created. The only analog in the signal is uh, basically the speaker cables. Uh, so all the digital signals and all the digital cables, everything is handled in the digital domain without any conversion or processing. Uh, and that's how it works. The major component in this obviously is our linear power supplies designed to be extremely low noise. Uh, and one of the biggest reasons that the power supply makes a difference is that digital is not just ones and zeros. And that's a very important thing to, to realize, whether it's in a computer or a transport or in a DAC, uh, digital signals are not ones and zeros. Uh, digital signals are actually a square wave. And that square wave represents logic high or logic low based on voltages that are coming from the power supply. Uh, and that logic high, or logic, logic high or logic low is processed either by the CPU or whatever is, is actually seeing those signals. And that results in a new square wave that is created from voltage in the power supply. So if you look at the computer uh, as an example, uh, the computer basically uh, has a square wave that is created from the hard drive or the software. Uh, that square wave is processed by the CPU after being loaded into RAM. Uh, and then new versions of that square wave are created based on the algorithms that are used in that software. So you end up having duplications of that square wave throughout the process, each time created from voltage uh, in the power supply. And when you have a noisy power supply, whether it's in this amplifier or in the computer or in a, really any so digital source, you end up having high frequency noise that gets folded over into the baseband. Um, and what that ends up doing is it ends up creating amplitude distortion on the square wave. Uh, and that basically translates to having odd harmonic content being introduced into the square wave that shouldn't be there. So you get odd harmonic frequency content that is carried through as those square waves are duplicated. Now, when you're looking at the system, uh, that basically translates to jitter in the sense that you are creating amplitude errors uh, at the digital receiving chips that are going to take that odd harmonic content that's part of the noise on that square wave, and it gets induced into the resulting analog signal that you're hearing. And so when you remove that noise from the power supply, the resulting square wave has a lot less amplitude distortion and a lot less jitter, and so you end up having a signal that has the correct harmonic content and the correct musical flow, uh, and uh, the resulting sound is a whole lot better. And so when you look at our systems and the way that we develop our electronics, whether it's for our fully digital home theaters or our two-channel systems based on our Mac Mini, we keep everything in the digital domain using very high-end, very low-noise linear power supplies so that we eliminate the amplitude distortion on the square wave and have the correct harmonic content at the output of our amplifier which results in a very, very low noise, very organic, and very musical presentation uh, that is very hard to beat at any price. Uh, it is the way of the future. Um, it is what I think most audio systems are going to be doing down the road, uh, eliminating D-to-A conversion, and it is sound that, in terms of value, is impossible to beat. We encourage you to give our Kratos a try. It is an excellent amplifier. Uh, the amplifier is 100 watts per channel. Uh, we have 
two SPDIF, two Toslink inputs. Uh, if you're using a computer, I highly recommend using a good USB to SPDIF converter. Uh, we were testing a USB input for the device, but found that an external one with a dedicated power supply was just so much better that it really wasn't worth integrating uh, one into the amplifier. Uh, if I flip this around real quick, we also have uh, ex an expansion shot slot on the amplifier, which allows you to have subwoofer inputs, or rather subwoofer outputs. Uh, we also have standard five-way binding posts for connecting your speakers, uh, and obviously you can see the two SPDIF and two Toslink uh, inputs that are selectable by remote control. Uh, the unit is 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms, and it'll do about 150 watts into 4 ohms, uh, and it is a very good sounding amplifier. Thank you.